going on everybody? This is Adam from the Historical African Martial Arts Association. Today, we're going to go through some exercises that you can use for sparring and training in North African Sabre and Shield. Stay with me. So the first thing that you'll notice is that the shield that I'm using is a, it would be considered about buckler size. Now, a lot of the shields used in North Africa uh, were around this size or a bit bigger, uh, depending, especially if we're talking about cow cans. An interesting note is that you'll find on the inside it's actually put together with, uh, you'll find on the inside that it's actually held together with rope. And there's a few reasons for that. One, if you're wearing a thicker glove, you can reduce the number of ropes. And two, if you are shooting a bow, you now can sling it up your arm and shoot. But let's get into the exercises. So the first cut we are going to do is a basic V cut. Uh, so we'll start with our left leg, toe pointed towards our opponent. Our right leg will be back, off center a little bit, and pointed at a 45 degree angle in that direction. Your shield will be held in a full grip, just under your eye line. So the V cut basically goes like this. You have the sword over your head. Now you draw down to the center and then back up. Turn again, draw down to the center, and then back up. So it's cutting in and out. This is almost like an attack and immediate defense. So you are cutting and attacking at your opponent and then covering up. Cutting and attacking at your opponent and then covering up. One and two, one and two. Now the turn over the head is, is important because if, for example, you do this guard here and they manage to have their sword a little bit higher, now you've got to protect your head as the sword comes over. So we're guarding the head. And this is how it will look sideways. Left foot forward, right foot back. Over. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And on the other side here, over again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now, the muscles that you are engaging to press, to perform this cut will be here in your back and here on your shoulder. So you're actually pulling with your chest and your back going like this. So when you're bringing the sword back up, you're pulling with your back. You're not using your shoulder. You're pulling with your back and bringing it back down. And the reason for this is control. Your arm dictates the angle and the position of the sword. Your back is telling you whether to go up or down. So now you can do this with a partner. One can defend and the other can attack. And here's essentially how it would go. You start here and one, two, one, two. And you would be cutting and defending in order. So as you cut down, they will be coming up. And as you come up, they will be cutting down. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you can go ahead and try that at home. Now, let's get into the next exercise. Okay, so now that we've done the more basic exercise of doing that V cut that you can practice at higher speed, now we're gonna take a look at a way that you can grap grapple or work within the bind. So. You have your shamshir. Your opponent comes with another shamshir or stick, what have you. They're cutting down towards you. Now here is what you do. Take your sword and you guide their blade into your cross guard, here. You push your cross guard to meet theirs. Now, you turn your hand. Notice how their sword, my sword, sorry, is kept between the opponent's weapon and, the, and my head. Now you've got your arm or your wrist on the hand or the wrist of your opponent. Press it down. Now here's what's happened. Their sword is on the other side of your arm and unable to strike at you. Your blade would essentially be in this position. Draw cut. So a little bit faster, they'll come in and attack, you push, turn it over, push their hand down, and then cut. Now, without the stick, so that you can see how this looks in hand, 
And of course, with the help of a shield. So you're here. Catch it, turn it, cut. One more time. Catch, you wanna make sure to get it in here in the cross guard. Turn, now their sword is here. Press down, and as you press, you cut. And again. One more time. So that is another exercise that you can practice at home. Now, let's move into the next one. So, we've shown a basic exercise using the V cut, showing how to convert a cut to a defense. We've also shown how you can take a bind and use that to take advantage of your opponent. Now, finally, let's show an example of how you can go from a parry into a thrust as you're repulsed. So here we go. As always, take your standard shield position. And again, you can do this or you can do this. It is really up to what you feel the most comfortable doing. I personally prefer this because it's a lot less intense on my arm. Now, you are parrying and returning the attack. You start by doing this. So imagine the cut is coming from this side. Cut comes from this side. You parry and then you thrust. You can step into that as well. So you parry, thrust. Show that again. Parry, thrust. And again, parry, thrust. If they come through on the other side, you parry, making sure to cover your head or your hand, depending on what you want to defend more. Uh, the blade should be, of course, protecting your head at all times whenever possible. So you can just turtle up or you can protect your hand in case that they were trying to cut low. So you parry, thrust. Again, parry, thrust. You can also add an additional step. So you can parry and then thrust. Of course, making sure to protect your head when you attack. So again, parry, thrust. Back again, parry, thrust. One more time, parry, thrust, parry, thrust. Now, let's move into a combination exercise that I like to call rocking the cradle. All right, so now we've done simple cuts, we've done work from a bind, and now we've done a parry repost. Next, let's follow up with a combination exercise that engages footwork. Now, this exercise is called, is called uh, rocking the cradle. This is an exercise that I created myself uh, that I use often in sparring. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but when it does, it's always amazing. So here is how you apply that. Shield up here by your chin. Left foot forward pointing straight, right foot 25 or 45 degrees off to the side here. The sword is here in the guard position one. Now, what you want to do is start off doing a tasha by the knee out. So this is a cut straight to the side of the head, but this is actually just a feint. What you're actually doing is this. So you're faking the cut and bringing the sword up. So we'll do the first step, faking the cut, bringing the sword up. Now, where do you go from here? You've already pulled the sword up. So now what you're trying to do is get your opponent to commit to a parry to this cut. While their hand is out, you have basically slipped around their defense, and now you're cutting at their arm. So without doing the movement, or without doing the footwork, you're cutting in, bringing the blade up, and then cutting to the side. So you're faking a cut to the head, bringing the sword up, and then charging at the arm. So again, one, two. One, two. So now you have to go from this to the third step. So the third step is where you'll be passing your opponent. What I mean by that is you've done your first cut, which was a feint. You've done your second cut, which aims at the arm. Now, if this doesn't work, you need to get out of the way and you need to get your arm out of the way because now your arm is at risk. So you take a step to the side and you do a cut to their leg bringing your sword to your chest. So we'll do this from the beginning. 
Chain to the cut. Cut for the arm. Now you come back and swing at their leg. Ideally, what should happen is they should have shifted. So their response to the first cut, they're trying to cut it. Now you're cutting at their arm. So they bring that in and they strike at you. But you have moved to the side outside of their direct, outside of their direct line of cut, or the direct line of their sword. And you've aimed at their leg. So again, one, pull it in. Two, cut. Three, swing for the leg. Now this should put you in a position where the two of you have now shifted. So now you are here. Now you, of course, have just put your back to your opponent. That, of course, puts you at risk. How do you deal with that? And this is how. You've done one, two, and three. Now you have to defend yourself. Four. So now you are cutting back. So you are swatting away any weapons that they may have brought you away. Or if you have an opening, you're cutting at their head. Or their back, or whichever back of the leg, whatever is exposed and easy for you to get at. So we'll do it from the perspective where you'll follow me. Here we go. We'll do that again. And we'll go for it sideways here. This side. And those are four exercises that you can try for North African Saber and Shield. Thank you for your time, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Cheers. The Historical African Martial Arts Association's Hero Series celebrates the great military leaders of Africa's past. Order yours today at teespring.com.